والسلام على سيد الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاه والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاه والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاه والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى اله واصحابك يا نور الله All praise is due to Allah Azza wa Jal, the most wise, who created this world with his wisdom. Subhanallah. And the choicest of peace and blessings be upon his noble messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the fountain of the treasures of wisdom. He sent peace and blessings upon his 25 household and his brilliant companions who drank from his cup of wisdom and carried it forward. Subhanallah. جس کی ہر بات وحی خدا چشم علم و حکمت کے لاکھوں سلام جس کے پانی سے شاداب جان و جنا اس دہن کی تراوت کے لاکھوں سلام مصطفیٰ جان رحمت کے لاکھوں سلام شمع عزم ہدایت کے لاکھوں سلام صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم محمد As the Prophet of Rahmah, the intercessor of the Ummah, the owner of Jannah Arwah Unafidah, may our souls be sacrificed at his blessed feet, has stated that the one who excessively decides the root, he sends salams and salutations upon me abundantly on Friday, I will intercede for him on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. What a beautiful khush khabri and glad tidings for those who excessively decide and send salams. Salams upon the noble messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah kareem enable us to recite and send countless of the rood and salatu wa sallam upon him subhanallah. The nigran of the shura, Hazrat Mawlana Abu Hamid Muhammad Imran Abqari Maddadilluhu al-Ali. The nigran of the markazi majlis shura of da'awat islami, a movement of the devotees of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of course. So he continuously presents madani pearls, Uh, words of wisdom to the Nigrans, the uh, representatives and other Islamic brothers who are in this beautiful, fragrant environment of Dawah Islami. From time to time, he presents these Madani pearls. So yes, dear viewers of Madani channel, our discussion is actually the words of wisdom mentioned by the Nigran himself, subhanAllah. The motivation which he gives and associates of Dawah Islam, the Madani pearls which flows from his mouth and the tarbiyat can be seen coming right from Amir al-Sunnah subhanAllah directly and then he shares that with the, the Zamadaran throughout the globe subhanAllah and yes dear viewers today we want to share those beautiful words, Madani pearls, um, motivational Uh, I would say, um, you know, sentences which will give us such motivation to become better humans, for us to rectify our actions, for us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many of these uh, sentences and many of these, I would say, advices that's given in this book, Mohasa, uh, which is also available on the website of Da'awat Islami, uh, is actually the summary of many ahadith of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa They are the summary of many اقوال آف دا بزرگان دین ایز ویل سبحان اللہ پروگرام کے آخر تک ساتھ پہ رہے کلام بھی سنتے ہیں انشاءاللہ زبا جلدہ سے آمین فی دس بیوٹیفل کلام ویچ بی آن یو سکرین ان نیکس فیو مومنٹس مجھے بخش دے بے حساب یا الہی کیپ میکنگ دعا یو کین سی آمین فی دس ایون دو یو آر واشنگ ایڈ بائی مدنی چینل اینڈ یو کین ریسائٹ ود ناد ریسائٹر ایز ویل ایز تھنک آف یور ایکشنز ایٹ یو آر کمٹڈ ان دس ورلڈ اینڈ بیگ فرام دا مرسی آف اللہ سبحان و تعالی فور اور سینس ٹو بی فور Subhanallah. Just after this kalam, we shall return. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ala alayhi wa sallam. Mujhe baksh de be sabab ya ilahi. Mujhe baksh de be sabab ya ilahi. Na kar na kabhi. Za 
सब यहाँ इलाही मुझे बख्श दे बे सब यहाँ इलाही कब तक फिरो खार अब या इलाही न करना कभी भी गजब या इलाही मुझे बख्श दे बे सब या इलाही पे आने को जी चाहता है बड़ा हज पे आने को जी चाहता है बुलावा अब आएगा कब या इलाही न करना कभी भी गजब या इलाही मुझे बख्श दे बे सब या इलाही सब या इलाही मैं देखूं मदीने का गुलशन दिखा दे तू दस्तो जीबाने अरब या इलाही करम ऐसा कर शब या इलाही गुजारू मैं फिर जो शब या इलाही न करना कभी भी गजब या इलाही मुझे बख्श दे सब या इलाही जो मांगा वो दे मुझको वो भी अता कर नहीं कर सका जो तलब या इलाही सभी एक हो जा शाह आली न सब या इलाही खुदाया पूरे खाती में से बचा ले खुदाया पूरे खाती में से बचा ले गुनागार है बलब या इलाही गुनागार 
پر ہے جا بلب یا الہی مجھے بخش دے بے سبب یا الہی نظر میں محمد کے جلوے بسے ہو چلو اس جہاں سے میں جب یا الہی بسے مرگ ہو روز روشن کی ماند میری قبر کی تیرا شب یا الہی گناہوں سے آتار کو دے معافی گناہوں سے آتار کو دے معافی کرم ہو نہ کرنا غزب یا الہی کرم ہو نہ کرنا غزب یا الہی مجھے بخش دے بے سبب یا الہی مجھے بخش دے بے سبب یا الہی نہ کرنا کبھی بھی غزب یا الہی مجھے بخش دے بے سبب یا الہی مجھے بخش دے بے سبب یا الہی آمین تم آمین اللہ آمین دس واز محمود اتاری صلی اللہ علباری اور ریسائٹنگ سچ ایک بیوٹیفل اینڈ ایموشنل کلام سبحان اللہ یس وی شوڈ سیک فور گیونس ان دا کورٹ اف اللہ سبحان و تعالی ڈیلی بی یور ویز ڈیلی ون شوڈ سیک ریپینٹنس ان دا کورٹ اف اللہ سبحان و تعالی اینڈ کیپ میکنگ دعا دیٹ وی ہیو دس قیامت اینڈ سٹیپ فاس اس ندین اینڈ دی وی ڈیپارٹ فرام دس ورلڈ On our lips should be the article of faith, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. This is uh, the tariqah and this is the way of a believer that he spends his entire life being obedient to Allah Azza wa Jalla and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he departs from this world, he departs whilst reciting the kalimah subhanallah and announcing his iman as he is sent towards the most gracious and merciful Rabb Azza wa Jalla. Subhanallah. In today's program, we are discussing the Madhuri pearls which are given and shared by Nigrani Shura. Niyat kar le, ki insha Allah Azza wa Jal, I will try and make a amal upon these words of wisdom. Subhanallah. As I mentioned, it was all these Madhuri pearls are actually summaries of many ahadith and aqwal of Huzur Ghani Deen, the sayings and teachings of the pious predecessors. For example, one of these Madhuri pearls is keep minimal expectations from people to safeguard yourself from mental pressure. Subhanallah. Keep minimal expectations from people. Minimal expectations from people. For what? To safeguard your own self, your own ruh, your spirit and your body from mental pressure. In one Madani Pearl, he says, communicate according to the position and status of other person, of other people, not according to your nature. Subhanallah. Very deeply and very valuable Madani Pearl, dear viewers. In another Madani Pearl, he says, before engaging in a conversation with any person, visualize the layout of your conversation in your mind. Before you come into contact and into communication with any person that you are conversing with. Subhanallah. With regards to conversation, his first Madani Pearl is, keep your conversations concise but meaningful and complete. SubhanAllah. Let's add one more. He says, address people by their names as well. When you talk to people, address them or call them or announce them with their names. SubhanAllah. So today, majority of people who are suffering from mental pressure and anxiety is also due to the expectations they have. Yes. What's your input in this regard? 
you know, sometimes we do tend to expect a lot from people and uh, this is our own fault to an extent because as uh, say the Nigran Shura, Maulana Imran Attari Damal Barakat Mulla he says that keep minimum expectations from people to safeguard yourself from mental pressure. What is that mental pressure? Is disappointment. In, uh, a friend of mine, I was just discussing with him some issues. Uh, he told me, he told me something very nice, and I still remember. He said, "From expectations comes disappointment. <laughs> the less your expectations, the less your disappointments. Allah. The more expectations you have, the greater the disappointment. Allah. So if we don't have it, we are actually safeguarding ourselves against those disappointments." that we're going to face. And sometimes we may have unrealistic expectations from people. Like even in, in the family settings, from children, the children are they, at a very young age, five, six, we expect them to do things that big people do. So that is a, um, unrealistic expectations to have from children, 100%. not to make a noise, not to make a sound. And then if they do that against uh, what we expected of them, then we get irritated. And uh, then again, Alhamdulillah, very beautifully, he said, that communicate according to the position and status of the other person, not according to your nature. Mm -hmm. Because you are not conversing with yourself. Conversation is something that can only happen with two people. Unless you like, somebody likes talking to himself in the mirror. <laughs> so, in conversation, when you're talking to somebody, that's an individual. We need to realize that to separate ourselves from the next person. Meaning, we can't assume that, you know, whatever my thinking, my philosophy of life is, the next person is going to have the same ideas and the same philosophies. Oh. We are different individuals. That's why the word individuals, you know, we are individuals. We're not similars or we're not twins. Or in, they are individuals, right? So, in, in that way, uh, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alhamdulillah, these are, as Mu'asaf said, derived from the Mubarakah hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, people according to their level of understanding. So if we are, if we are a child, it would be a childish discussion. Uh, and I'll humble myself, I'll lower myself, and I'll behave like a child. You should behave to a child like a child in order for them to relate to you. Yeah, but otherwise, is a mismatch, a very big mismatch there. Then again, if we are talking to somebody elderly, we can't be childish at the same time. We need to bring ourselves to that level of respect and is it and give them their due respect. 100%. Similarly, in every setting, if we are talking to a professional person, we have to talk in a certain way. Like, for example, we are here in Madhmi Channel Studios. If I want to talk to about our, our cameraman, mashallah, and uh, I'll talk to him in the terms that he would understand. I wouldn't talk to him in a term that people understand. So, different levels, different understandings, alhamdulillah. Again, the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says, now different status of people. He says that anzilu nasa manazilu. That treat people according to their level, according to their haisir, whatever they are. So, again, it is self-evident, alhamdulillah. And, oh, and both oh. is alhamdulillah, is shining through this, both ahadith, alhamdulillah, summarized in this beautiful magnet given by so communicate according to the position and status of the other person, not according to your own nature. Subhanallah. This is so great dear viewers. In fact, in the third Madani pool, he says, before engaging in a conversation, visualize the layout of your conversation. Mm -hmm. And this is so important. I think many of us that don't do this, uh, the disappointment many people out there face is that, oof, why did I say this? Why did I say that? Oh, I wish I never said this. Uh, you know, like on conversations, like done on chats and stuff like that by the phone, for example, using an application, there, there are uh, options available to delete your message so that the message doesn't read the person that you have sent it to. But sometimes, Masa, in a conversation, face-to-face, uh, -face, you know, interaction face-to-face, -face, some words are said pierces directly to the heart. Mm -hmm. And it leaves the tongue like a bullet, for example, from the magazine of a gun, or I would say... Uh, an arrow from the bow. Once it's shot and fired, it can never return back. Likewise are the words. So if one does not visualize his layout and he just wants to get involved in a conversation without understanding, you know, the situation of the conversation and he says whatever in his heart, such people then face disappointment. Many a times there are daughter-in-laws out there, mother-in-laws who 
maybe treat their daughter in that way or daughter in laws would treat their mother in laws in a certain way daughters mothers brothers sisters siblings cousins family members business partners whenever you are involved in any conversation always visualize the way out yani apne tolo phir bolo and this is also a summary of you know subhanallah the aqwal of the five predecessors that you need to measure what you say and how you say subhanallah so in this way here the fourth madani pool will come into place where you keep your conversations concise but meaningful at the same time subhanallah subhanallah, subhanallah. so yes dear viewers of the madani channel what amazing madani pools nigran of the shura haji maulana imran atari damul barakat wal aliya then says in one madani pool respect is earned through good character not by demanding it subhanallah subhanallah so in another madani pool he says the noble prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to appreciate his blessed companions in their presence and absence he used to appreciate his blessed companions whatever they have done for him sallallahu alaihi wasallam in terms of presenting themselves their honor the you know their bow at the feet of mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he used to appreciate everything they have done for the pleasure of allah azza wa jalla and for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in whichever way they could do in their presence as well as in their absence this is the sunnah of the beloved rabbi sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be grateful to any person that you do appreciate in his presence and even when he is absent do not speak ill of such people and then he says if allah almighty honors someone we should also honor them and avoid envy of such people subhanallah this is so important for us for our own iman to be uh, you know on the right mm-hmm. track and for us to be walking the right track in the right path because if there's somebody who's blessed by Allah azza wa jalla with wilayat for example with, with with immense blessings and Allah azza wa jalla likes that banda but because of some issue we don't like that person whom Allah loves mm-hmm. then you can imagine already what would be the state of such a person now subhanallah so these are some amazing madani pearls in one part he says it is also part of the life lifestyle of successful people that they do not waste time allahu akbar subhanallah it is also the a part of the lifestyle of successful people so those that you see successful in your in your side those who are very kamyab successful wah uske paas ye hai ye hai ye then you must remember the madani power behind this is they honor and they treasure wah and time they utilize the time accordingly and correctly and for those people that waste their time their leisure time then such people face lots and lots of disappointment masha and uh, they are unable to accomplish what they are chasing for the goals in mm-hmm. life so i just heard this saying someone was saying i was in a conversation he says ab pashtai ka kare the chidiya chup gayi ke la la so this is saying now <laughs> this is hindi right ji there is no uh, use now holding your head and in a state of regret mm-hmm. when the time is already gone and for it something already happened allah allah the time you have we had all the times before we get occupied and we have leisure time we should value that because that thing is a nemat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the time of leisure now if we didn't value it and then we got occupied then there's no point regretting now because we were told by the beloved nabi yes. sallallahu alaihi wasallam to treasure it to value it now it's gone what's gone is gone uh, the life of of a man is nothing but the sum of the days that we are here so each moment that is passing by is never to come back there is no such thing that you know we all are here for an appointed time once the time is up not even a second is delayed before the soul is captured and we are taken in the presence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so very valuable advice in in order to value time and with regards to time management we run ashura Damul Barakatul Muladiya. Now we are reading his uh, and mentioning his Madani pearls, and I remember one Madani pearl he gave uh, in Johannesburg in our Tarbiyat Teach Tema that there is only one uh, real way of time management. There is one key rule of time management: is whenever you relapse, you start over, meaning never to give up. So we we can't really manage time. so okay. if we fail to do something sometimes life happens things are un- unexpected things happen something came up something urgent came up some emergency came up and because of that our schedule gets changed or gets jumbled up or gets compromised then in that case instead of saying ah, no i don't think i can ever do it let me just not worry about it 
So that is the very moment he reminds you, you know, not to relapse. Say, inshallah, I'll try again. Try again until you get it right. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. But um, yeah, on this note, he also says, if you keep your schedule, you keep your things straight like the rows of prayers, then nothing can disturb the sin. The thing is that uh, when a person plans something, we easily allow other things to filter and disturb the planning and the, uh, and the root of a person. If you have a plan and schedule in place, do not allow anything to disturb it. Any, keep trying to do what you have planned. Any jo jais kam ho, jo, jo bhi kam hai apka, jais kam, to alhamdulillah, try for nothing to disturb the plan. And we allow other things to filter and come in between our plans. And when that's not done, it disturbs the mind mentally. Who will do the work of yesterday, of tomorrow rather? So today's work will pile up and make it difficult for you to complete the next day's work, including the work that you have left behind. And some people procrastinate a lot because of the schedule being disturbed. For some reason, there's no balance in it. So what happens, Mulana Sahib, this causes a lot of mental pressure and causes people to go home arguing or with fights or pressure of the business. So when you plan something, try to keep the balance. And he says, how the balance and how straight should your plans be? He says, straight like the rows of prayers. So foof, just try, na? And we say, stand shoulder to shoulder, make sure your heels and your toes are all in line. You know, nobody is back and forth. And uh, subhanAllah, leave no gaps in between. Likewise, is a tariqah, when you plan something, plus keep it straight like the rows of the prayers. Subhanallah. And subhanallah. then he says, accept your mistakes and eliminate misunderstandings. I would say, Mulana Sahib, the majority of people, somewhere down the line, we are never ready to accept our mistakes. Mistakes are the things that are milestones for us to progress in life. If it wasn't for those mistakes, you wouldn't have gotten to where we are. Like, for example, a child falls down, gets up, falls down, gets up, and there comes a time when he steadily begins to walk, and then... Um, there comes a time he starts to run without falling, mm. which at in the initial stages would have been unimaginable for him to do so, to even think of running. But then through those mistakes, making mistakes, then rectifying them, making mistakes, then learning through those mistakes. One thing is keep on making mistakes and letting them be like that. And one is learning from the mistake. Yeah, but subhanallah, subhanallah. So we all, to err is human. This is insani fitrat. I mean, we're not perfect. And it is in our nature to err sometimes, from time to time. And if we go too hard on ourselves, no, I made a mistake. Like, for example, if I, I, I started Darsan Islam, and in the beginning, I couldn't understand what to I wanted to give up. Because uh, the medium through which that Nizami is taught, mainly the beginning stages, you have some Urdu books, uh, Nahwa books in Urdu and so on. I didn't understand Urdu. So Alhamdulillah, um, in our Darul Ulum, uh, our Ustaz, there was no primary school. It started from uh, Darja Ula. So he took it upon himself to motivate us, subhanAllah. And we kept on making mistakes, silly mistakes, oh, with, with regards to understanding, writing, and reading Urdu. Alhamdulillah, there came a time through the motivation of our stars, merciful stars, Alhamdulillah. There came a time, we weren't really ashamed of our mistakes, but they became the stepping stone for us to progress through, and inshallah, further our studies. So that, that is one way I can relate to the mistakes. If I, have, if I hadn't made those mistakes, I don't think I would have gotten them really that. Okay, so you say mistakes are basically milestones to the success of a person in life, right? So if we use them as stepping stones and uh, we learn to accept a mistake, this is a very good quality in a person. It indicates toward a good character because he learns to make rudu. He learns to take back his words. Uh, when he's rectified and reformed on the spot, he doesn't make I yes. by shy, as they say, you know. Mm -hmm. And he learns to make ruju. So, this is the way the pious predecessors uh, have taught us. Even when they were right, they will accept defeat. Though they haven't even been in the defeat to say, well, they are defeated. But this is the akhlaq of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Though the one 
in front could be insulting and oppressing, but uh, the level of his tolerance would increase and increase and increase. It's such personality, Master. They rise above these basic tendencies of human ego. Mm-hmm. Our basic tendencies were to win, lose, lead. We think in these terms, either I'm winning or losing. Mm-hmm. But those pious predecessors, they look beyond all of this. Yes, all sure. of this uh, uh, temporary, you know, achievement and so agree. on. 100% agree. I, I'm here listening to Dhamad Barakatum Ali. Alhamdulillah, he is a pure tariqat and he is a guide to millions of Muslims, Alhamdulillah, without exaggeration. And uh, he himself, every Madan Mudakara, every time you watch Madan Mudakara, he will say this, that uh, if, you, if I make a mistake, you will find me uh, retracting my statement Allah. and uh, Allah. accepting the advice and I buy shaya karta nahi paayenge. Allah! Subhanallah! Allah. He's not um, in, in short term uh, gain and and satisfying his ego. It, for the short term it feels nice to stand your ground. Oh, how can I make a mistake? And, but in the long term these are the awliya Allah. They are Allah fearing people whose sole focus is to please Allah Masha subhanahu Allah. wa ta'ala and not to be right. They want to be right in the Jee. court of Allah, Jee. not in front of people, subhanAllah. So Jee. in that way, they have a greater motivation, mm. a greater, uh, alhamdulillah, motive to live by. 100%, 100%. Okay, mashallah, uh, we have a beautiful video clip for the viewers of Madani channel, also Madani Pearls with regards to patience is the companion of wisdom. And the presenter is none other than Maulana Nushad Al-Fari, Sallama Al-Bari. After this short clip, inshallah, we shall return. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. You know, we talk about sabr, patience, that we need to observe patience, especially when a difficulty first strikes our life. Some people go into depression because of the difficulties, the trials and tribulations that they face. I would like to tell you that always try to keep a mindset of patience, that what problems I am facing, maybe it can be great problems for me, but there could be people out there that are suffering from worse situations than us. This helps, it's a coping mechanism that as on one side, no matter how good I am at my job, then always be somebody better than me. Likewise, no matter how difficult my situation and my circumstances are, there'll always be people out there who are in more dire circumstances than ourselves. The problem is, we don't observe patience. We are not thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal, even with the difficulties in our life. We don't make tawbah, even with the difficulties in our life. We have impatience that if the job didn't come through, if my interview was declined or rejected, if a person didn't call me to recite Naat Sharif or to give a talk, or maybe somebody didn't invite me, to the walima or to their private function. If I lose something, if I'm stuck in a traffic jam, I don't observe patience. Why is this the case? If I observe patience, there are tremendous rewards. And if a person does so, then if he does for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu will grant him rewards for his patience as well. So the next time you're stuck in a traffic jam, the next time that something is not working out or you feel that the doors shutting down and closing all around you. The next time that you are sick, that you have a fever or a flu or a migraine, observe patience. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Welcome back, subhanallah, and they weren't one, but many Madani pearls, mashallah, that we have heard. Alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, may Allah kareem bless all the viewers of Madani channel, and make dua that Madani channel always continue, alhamdulillah, growing from strength to strength, and your support is by watching the program, as well as sharing this with others, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we were discussing uh, these amazing Madani pearls of misunderstanding, and uh, miscommunication, so on and so forth. And you've given a very beautiful explanation uh, uh, behind this Madani Pal of Nukran Shura. In fact, with regards to this point, another point comes to my mind when His Eminence uh, Haji Imran Fari Damat Barakatul Ali had visited South Africa sometime back just recently in his last trip. Mm-hmm. And he says, 
हर मसले में हर प्रॉब्लम में दो चीजें हैं या तो इज ए मिस्टेक और मिस कम्युनिकेशन गलती हो तस्लीम कर लो मिस कम्युनिकेशन हो तो दूर कर दो दो चीजें हर चीज में सुबह अल्लाह सो वी हैव द प्रॉब्लम दैट I want to prove my ground. I want to stand my ground and prove myself right, no matter what happens. Yani even if the wrong is wrong, I'll make the wrong right. ये होता है. और अगर miscommunication है, misunderstanding है, तो बजाय ये कि हम उस misunderstanding को दूर करें और उसको हटा हटा दें, हम मज़ेद उसमें fuel add करते हैं. तो वो problem फिर ख़त्म नहीं होता है. That's why our enmities last for years and for centuries, from the parents to the grandparents, uh, grandchildren, great grandchildren. So this should be avoided if this Madani plan can be followed. Subhanallah. And then let's move forward. Uh, he says, keep your dealings transparent and clear for the hearts of others. This is another thing which doesn't allow for trust to be built, whether it's between spouses, Mulana Sahib. We have dealings with our children, with our wives and children, with our family members, with business partners. Whatever dealings may be there, keep it transparent and clear. Why? When something is transparent and clear, then heart, which your heart will be safe. If you open it, you will remember it. In this transparency, it will be all revealed. Openly, everything is clear. The accounts are also clear. But when a person starts to hide, they make plans for it not to be exposed, for it not to be in the open. Don't think and assume others cannot see, because those who hide assume others can't see. Yes. What's your point on this? On this matter? Actually, truth has its own way of surfacing. Yeah, very beautiful way. Truth yeah. cannot be hidden. Yes, you can conceal it for some time, and, but it will surface Allah. sooner or later. When when it surfaces, who faces the embarrassment? Okay. The one who has been concealing it. If we had it transparent, even if it wasn't something like, for example, uh, if you are not doing something dodgy, then there is no need to hide. But if you are still hiding, then there is no wisdom behind that kind of thing. It doesn't have a logic. And if it doesn't have a logic, then why hide? <laughs> But if you're doing something dodgy and you're hiding, first of all, one shouldn't be doing that. Astaghfirullah, Allah, Allah, so true. So if so true. if one gets into the habit of being transparent, being like an open book, it will safeguard that person from getting into any sort of dealing. Which would make him face in that? Allah, Subhanallah, Allah Kareem, Hamey Amal ki tofiq ata par Hamey Mawasab. Brothers aren't uh, aren't transparent with each other in many matters, which causes this enmity between them. Um, sometimes when you want to become transparent with your dealings, other believes ni chuta hai. Ye hamko deceive kar raha. Why? Because we are not even truthful in our actions, in our words at times. So become transparent. Be a straight talker. Be an honest speaker. The Quran says, "Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim." Ya ayyuhan ladina amanu taqul Allah wa qulu awlan sadida. For believers, fear Allah Azza wa Jalla and talk straight. Now, our conversations are very important. Many arguments that erupt um, is due to the conversations we have. I mean, how can an argument erupt without the mouth opening and some words leaving the mouth? So, it can happen if you can control your emotions, control your words. And he says in one of the Madani Prophet verses, "I've controlled your emotions." So, emotions are such things that you have to be in control. Me, what are you? Just me, upon your emotions, be kabu kia. The one who has control um, over his emotions is also a very successful person. And if the emotions is uncontrollable, when you become emotional, you extra emotional. And nobody can get you into control. This is very detrimental to one's health as well as one's feelings as well, uh, because in a state of emotion, you even cannot talk straight. At times, even in emotional bayans, the person may say something after which he has to retract his words. He has to make review. So, whilst being emotions, whilst being saddened upon something, measure your conversation as the Tanishul Abdul Qadir called, because for a person to see to to have a visual about his layout of his conversation. And then measure what you want to say. Pele tolo, her bolo. And then he says in one Madani poem, "Masab, give importance to the person you are communicating with." Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Ye chiz aajana chahiye. Ye bhot important Madani pool hai. That give importance and give, uh, you know, the person that you're communicating with importance in life. If you're going to make that person feel as if he has no worth. In the conversation, and you don't want to listen to his opinion on the matter, and give him a chance to say what he wants to say, 
and make him feel oppressed or make him feel heavy and obliged to follow and obey what you say, it means you aren't giving any importance to him. How can you give importance to a person the one that you're communicating with? It should be giving him your ear. See how, give him a hearing. Allow him to say what he wants to say by you giving your ears attentively. Just mm-hmm. listen to him. And this was the tariqah and the sunnah of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallah. And I have heard this hadith from Marana Sahib uh, some time ago. Mm-hmm. Whenever um, somebody would engage in a conversation with Rasulullah he would give, give them his full attention. Aye, and his aye, face aye. would be turned directly towards Allah. that person. Allah. Not that that person is talking to him, I'm looking the other side. That shows you are not interested. Very interested. Now, modern day's context, um, it goes something like this. Yes, you said something? Exactly the phone. That's not for you. So that means you're talking to me. And I'm showing you, I'm not interested in what you have to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you, then the person gets dis- dis- discouraged, Allah. right? In starts fact, to in, walk in away. In fact, Mohsab, this is happening with parents and children. If the, if, the, if the child is, you know, told to carry out some action, and the child is either busy, busy with the television or busy on the phone and is busy communicating and he's giving his ear there and his eyes and mind and heart, everything focus on communication. So is this a part of it, Mohsab? Definitely. And, and now there, there are more distractions than ever. <laughs> now the person can be finished the whole conversation. Uh, what did you say? So what, what kind of impression does that give to Allah, the person who Allah, wants Allah, to Allah. get into communication? What if it was something very important? <laughs> what if that person came to tell you, you know, there, there's, a, there's a thief in the yard here. Wow. And you know, and you, yeah, 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 okay. Because you overheard that person yeah. or misheard that person because you were too busy to pay attention to anything. We could be missing out on so many important things. Relationships, they fall apart because of this lack of communication. Ma- majority of the time, whenever there is a, a break in, in, in a relationship, a majority of the time, the, the cause, the main cause, the root cause is there is no communication. So we need to uh, you know, reduce this distance of communication, this gap. And we need to bring in this togetherness between families and how can this be found dear viewers maybe perhaps when you eat together on a table okay. find and look for mocha and for chances of being together as a family and when this happens don't lose that opportunity instead of advising them good on the table don't talk about business matters and dunyawi matters it's very difficult there are many families out there who are deprived of this blessing of eating together they are just waiting for that one moka. When will my daughter, my son, and my children sit with me as a father and respect me and eat with me, have a decent conversation with the people? This many families lack. And if you have it in your home, why are you wasting it by having unnecessary talks on the, on the table? So when you sit to eat, try to have some Islamic discussions, try to have some. Islamic talks, uh, some emotional Islamic talks so that you can consume your food at the same time, make shukr to Allah Jalla, and make dua and eat with the family with the near that this is the sunnah of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa together with that subhanallah you're able to interact and find out about the next process that you can problem. Instead of going in the bedroom, sitting privately, that's also in one way. But the blessings of eating together in the jama'ah, that's lost. That's mm-hmm. most definitely lost. I mean look at this with any pearl, Mulana Sahib. Nigran Shura subhanallah is really amazing. And remember, dear viewers, these are those pearls of wisdom which is filtered through every Nigran in Dawud Islam. Subhanallah. He is made to think like this all the time, not just one nasiha. In every visit that he approaches and gives us, subhanallah, he sits us down and he motivates us. He sacrifices his time and his family's time. He sits with every country Nigran and associates and he explains these pearls. Even though we have heard that this trip, he'll come in the next trip and make sure that we are practicing those Madhuni Pearls. Because once your character and your akhlaq becomes better, you will see progress in your work, in your dealings as well. He says, assess the fact that those who spend some time with us during speeches and, and consultations are impressed by us. He says, assess this part here. But if someone spends a few months in our company, Will they remain impressed with us? Allah. Allahu Akbar. The answer to this can be obtained by examining your lifestyle and private activity. So these are two important things here that assess the fact that those who spend some time with us during programs or during consultations and giving time to people, there is 
so much of respect, you know, kissing of the hands, muanqa, musafaha, giving your gifts because why they love you, they love your personality. You're smiling with them in the business place, you're smiling to your customers, wow, you're giving some extra change to him with muhabbat and love, no, keep the change for yourself. But the same person has deprived his wife from nano nafqa. The same husband is not providing for his wife and children as he's supposed to. His mother could be waiting for medication, which he promised some time back, but here he's giving to people that don't matter to him as compared to the close blood relations. We can give the charity of smile to others, but we can't give the very same charity in our own home. When charity begins at home, Allah Akbar. So what of your, some of your Madhani calls Mu'asa with regards to this important Madhani call? Because he says here, if the same can be maintained in the private life, any jitna respect bahar wale de rahe, mm. agar ye banda aisa hai ki andar wale bhi de rahe, yes. the insiders are giving him the very similar respect, then it's understood that this man is a respectable man. Why? Because those who live with him in his private life give him the very same muhabba and love. It means the outside people have seen the truth which the insiders have also seen. Again, this is now the inside-out approach where a person tries to better himself in his privacy. Once you molded yourself into the kind of person that you want to be, following the Sunnah of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi the privacy of your own home, nobody in the whole world knows that you're following Sunnah. It is for your knowledge. That's for your knowledge. Be honest to yourself first. Kya baat? And Kya be baat a, a, a Sunni for yourself first, meaning Sunni as in following the Sunnah. The Allah, Allah, true Allah, Sunni, Allah, 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 following the Sunnah of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then you don't have to show people, it will be shown. Kya baat because we, we, if, if you're doing that, that, that will be with sincerity. If there is sincerity, you, sincerity speaks for itself. You know, as we tend to say, action speaks louder than the words. You don't have to say to anybody that you follow Sunnah. It will be very evident. Inshallah, if there is sincerity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes others, Ameen. puts Ameen. your Ameen. love in others' Ameen. hearts. Ameen. Meaning, if somebody becomes, uh, how, how do awliya Allah become awliya Allah? By acting upon the Sunnah of Rasulullah with so utmost Allah. sincerity. By continuously performing nawafu, let alone fard as they, they do. But uh, nawafil as well, taagid yeah, and so on. And then there comes a stage where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to love them. When he loves them, then he tells Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam that uh, this so and so, this person, this banda of mine, I love him. And I command you to love him. Then go around and tell, uh, announce among the malaika Allah that I love this person. And then go on the earth and put in the hearts of people that they should love him. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So sincerity. Mashallah. Because Mashallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if there is sincerity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it happen. We don't have to. Alhamdulillah. Amir al-Sunnah Dawan Barakatul Aliya. He is so very much against show off. Alhamdulillah. If one has to look at the condition he lives in, sometimes it is documented. And um, people who are very close to him, they mentioned they, that they found him sleeping on the floor just to follow the sunnah of the beloved Nabi. Sallallahu without any bed, the sand is stuck to his body. Why? Because this is one of the ways that Rasulullah sometimes slept. Subhanallah. So this is his obedience to the sunnah Subhanallah. and his following of the sunnah of the beloved Nabi. So it's proven, as you said, from the actions instead of mm-hmm. saying it from his mouth. Allah Akbar. It's really, really amazing, dear viewers. This is Shukran to Mona Sahib. And now it's time to end this program. Remember, dear viewers, avoid situations which causes flaws in your character. Somebody is causing you to get provoked, to provoke you to say a few words. Don't interact. Avoid being stingy and greedy as well. Do not be that. Do not make people wait. He says, not being punctual will also cause flaws in your character. Eat. Eating in a manner that the observer considers you greedy when you're dishing out your food, when you're eating, sit and eat in such a manner that others don't have this ill opinion about you. Allah Akbar. Engaging in pointless arguments and lengthening your speech is also another thing which causes your character to become flawed. Allah Akbar. So these are some of the other pearls we've heard and there are just a few of them. There are hundred more pearls. We wish we had more time. However, we shall be back next time. Keep making dua for Da'wat Islami, for Madani Channel, and join the fragrant movement of Quran and Sunnah. May Allah Kareem forgive our sins. Ameen. Bijahin Nabiyya Al-Ameen. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallu Alal Habib. Sallallahu Ta'ala Ala Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.
Treasures of wisdom, treasures of wisdom, treasures of wisdom, treasures of wisdom, treasures of wisdom.